Welcome, Impactful Parents. Today, we're going to talk about redesigning our life, taking risks, and doing new things to make us have a better life post-COVID, because now is our opportunity. So today, I have on very special guests, Betty Fetter, and she is founder and CEO of Young Rembrandt, the author of Also Being Visual is the name of her book, and she shares her story of starting a home-based business while raising four young kids. Mm -hmm. But now as a grandmother, she's encouraging all of us to consider redesigning our lives so that when we go back post COVID, we are even better than before. So very happy to have her on today. Thank you for being here, Betty. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here, Christina. I want to start very quickly, not too long, but give me a little synopsis of you raising four kids and starting young Rembrandts. Tell me a little bit about your, your background. I, you know, I love to share that story because there was times it was so busy and so overwhelming. And I just want to encourage all you moms, like you're, you've got a lot of, especially during COVID, you had a lot on your plate. And somehow you got through it and you will again. And so, um, so for young Rembrandt, I had a background in um, art. That's my degree is in studio art. And I had no plan to ever be in business, start a business, write a book, do, you know, I franchised my business. What is that for an art major? And so I never planned any of that. So, you know, after I had, I got married, I'm still married to my high school sweetheart. It's been 45 years. God, I sound old. I am her. But we um, had kids and I ended up working at a monastery school. So do a little art, have my kids, do a little monastery school education. And a friend of mine asked me to give her kids art lessons. I said no, she persisted, and now young Rembrandt. So I just started doing something I wanted to do, but no plan for a big business, but for $35 a month, wow, (laughs) $35 a week, wait, it was big time. So it was just a matter of something I like to do. I started small, I kept thinking about my kids. How do I arrange a life around my kids? After a few years, my, when the business was big enough, my husband actually left his corporate sales job and joined me. And so for 13 years, we ran Young Rembrandt as a home-based family business. What do you think is the biggest challenge that moms face today compared to when you had kids back then? You know, I just really love encouraging moms right now because you guys, it's tough. It's harder now. It really is. Um, I think the biggest thing you have to deal with that we didn't is a blessing and a curse is technology and social media. And you know, there's plenty of information. What are the boundaries? How do we handle that? What do we do about it? But I would just encourage as parents, don't believe all that hype. You know, they don't, you don't have to be on social media. They don't have to be on social media. They don't require their mom has these kind of rules. You're tougher. Good. Be tough. You know, our kids still need the basics. They need to know how to take care of themselves. You're raising people who have to be fully functioning adults. They don't learn that from a video game. And so I think you've got a lot of challenge of resisting the pressures of, you know, today and what kids want and what the world is telling you, but going to your heart and saying, what's my kid really need? And to be able to really find the truth in what your kids need and just them. And that's where I started my business, The Impactful Parent. Um, Very similar in a spot, you know, about six years ago, going, what am I going to do? My life is changing. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get out of the teaching profession because I, I spent too much time teaching, basically. I was 
I had to come to a point where I needed to stop taking care of everybody else's kids and focus on my own. And that's how the impactful parent was born. And again, just like you never would have thought, never had a degree in how to do my own business. You know, Mm -hmm. I ended up going back and getting my master's um, so that I can kind of get an idea of how to, to run things, but it completely out of the blue and a life shift in order for me to better myself and my kids. And so transition, that's so scary. It is terrifying. And if we have moms out there or just parents, dads too, that are listening to this right now and they're like, yeah, like, you know, <laughs> Betty did it. She founded Young Rembrandt. She's very, very successful. Um, you know, Christine's doing it right now and we'll see. Uh, my future is still to, <laughs> to be determined. <laughs> <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> um you know, it's a scary thing. What, what's some of the best advice you could give to somebody who's, who's really thinking about spreading out their wings, going outside of their comfort zone and starting something new? You know, I think there's so much um, wisdom available. You know, I went back and got my degree in my 50s. I got my business degree. My art degree was so much more fun. But you got to do what's necessary, right, Christina? That's right. So, I'd say, just like Christina, if if you need additional training, you go get additional training. You need to watch 200 hours of YouTube about how to do something, you watch it. It's incredible what is available now. But I think it's start small. And not that you have to start small. Start with an idea. Nurture it. Let it grow. Well, I'm going to get to that. I have a couple ideas for you. So... I would say, you know, for me right now, also in growing my business, you have to be aware of what your family needs then and now. So like for me, I started the business, it kept growing. And just like you, I'd keep learning, how do I do this? How do I do this? And at some point, I decided I wanted to franchise my business. What the heck did I know about franchising? We found a franchise lawyer. We went to franchise training, you know, legal training. We just got educated, a couple of my staff people, and we started selling franchises. So, again, you start in one place. It's going to grow. It's going to grow. It's going to, if you want it to, and you can just keep layering and expanding your business. So, don't think you have to get there immediately. You don't go from here, an idea to this outrageous success. You go with the idea and you just build and build and build. And then all of a sudden, like, oh, you're an overnight sensation. That took plenty. Baby steps, baby steps. Yeah. Yeah. Building, building, building. It sounds like your business went through a lot of growth, a lot of changes. So how did you know when you and your family were ready for that? You know, for me, when I had kids, it was so important for me to be extremely present. I'm also was very involved, which I'm sure a lot of moms that are listening to an impactful parent podcast are very um, involved in the community and in school and all the kids events. So I when you know, I had a lot of opportunities. And I turned some things down because it was like, you can't invest in this group and these kids and this, and all of a sudden something comes up and you go running and chasing it. I just really weighed the opportunities that would come to me against where are my kids at right now? Where's my husband at? Where's our family structure at? Is this going to enhance it or is it going to compromise and take it away? And so just really analyzing, but being open to allowing it to evolve, just knowing you have a right. It's okay to say no sometimes too. Oh, I love that. It's okay to say no. Mm -hmm. So many moms have trouble with that word. They just cannot say no. It's so hard. And, you know, it's because we're people pleasers. We, we want mm-hmm. to make everybody happy. We're nurturers. We need to help everybody. Nurturers. Yes. You know, we want to take care of everybody, ease everybody's pain, help everybody out. And when you're trying to create something new for your family and you're still saying yes to everything on the outside of your family, 
that's really going to pose some problems because I'm telling, I mean, starting a new in Denver is it's all consuming (laughs) as me. Oh, I know (laughs) it's it's an all consuming endeavor. That's one of the things I think I learned how to do in my process of growth is learning how to say no, or at least no for right now. And maybe Mm -hmm. I could say yes to you later. Um, and that, that's a really tough lesson to learn though. So difficult. Well, I think as women, we also tend to shortchange ourselves most of all, and not to shortchange dads who are listening, but women are like, Oh, wait, I'm carrying 80 extra pounds. What's another 10? Well, you know, we just keep loading it on ourselves. And then we think it's okay because we can handle it. We can carry it. And it's like, no, you're not meant to carry all that. If you're carrying so much burden or whatever else is supposed to be doing, you don't get to carry your own, your own life and your own goals and your own destiny. You're not here for everybody else. I love that suggestion. I would love to get some more suggestions from you. Can you give us a few tips to consider as we're heading into our post COVID life? Okay. I was thinking about this and I thought, um, you know, any time is a time to reinvent ourselves. It's always possible. And I love all the different topics that you cover, Christina, because, you know, Parenting is a multidimensional project here, but I think that post-COVID just gives us a new chance to evaluate in a different way because the entire world got shut down. Work is different. Work has changed. The world has changed. Why not take some of that change for yourself? This is the opportunity. This does feel like the time. If you are listening to this audience and you are thinking about making a shift in your life, I understand it's really scary, but Betty is spot on. This is the time. So I think first what I would do is I would say, what's your ideal scene? Take some time. You know, I used to do this every year. I would fast for almost a week and just be like, What's new? Like, get a new vision for myself or my family. So what's your ideal scene? And it doesn't matter what it looks like. If your ideal scene is, oh, my God, I've always want to live on an island in Greece, and that's what my family is called to, then it would fall into place. But think about it. Is it that I really liked being from home, working from home, and I am never going back to corporate five days a week? 20, you know, 60 hours a week. So no, maybe you don't want to do that. Or maybe you said, I've had enough being at home and I really do need to go back into the office and my my kids need care because I am not a school coach. Whatever it is, we just think what is right for us and our family now, but long-term, what's, what's my vision? What's our vision? Then you say, what do I want for me? And we count just as much as our family. I so number that. one, what do I mean for your whole family? And how would you build to accomplish that? You know, for me, it was, I wanted my husband and I to be extremely present for our kids. I wanted to be very available. So by having a home-based business, I was very available. And it, my husband, too, and it was great. So do you want that? Do you want to get a nanny? Do you want to go mountain hiking? Whatever it is for your family. But then what is it for you? Because if we build our whole life around what's right for our kids, we're shortchanging ourselves and we're shortchanging our kids. Our kids need whole parents, really spiritually satisfied, whole Um, in our calling kind of parents. And so that's when they learn to live that way themselves. Speak it, Betty. I love it. (laughs) Because, But you know, it's so much easier said than done. I hear you and I completely agree 200%. And I can also tell you that for parents, it's really hard to make 
that shift of not everything's about them. And it is about us too. It's about our relationship, whether if you're in a partnership, whether that's a marriage or a partner, Mm -hmm. or even just asking, what do I need? Ooh, that's a tough question for so many parents to do. And I think one of the things that might help parents as you're listening to this is we're not saying put yourself first above your kids. We're saying make yourself a priority. You can have more than one priority in your life and you need to be one of those things and your kids could be the other, but you have to be a priority too. And that's where so many parents falter. We just don't make ourselves a priority. Everybody well, else is. There's just not enough hours in the day to say, excuse me, it's my best time. So, you know, not to be, it's, not, it's hard to make ourselves a priority because we're really good people and we want to take care of everybody. But you're right. We do need to make ourselves a priority. And it starts with what kind of, What kind of work do you want to do? What kind do you not want to do? Do you just need, um, you want lighter summers? Do you want um, more activity in your life? And it's not going to happen overnight. Like Christina said, you're not going to get up one morning and say, forget it. No more breakfast or laundry. (laughs) The world has changed post COVID and here's the new rules. So there is this nice, you're working up to it. You got to get that awareness. And the, it's interesting because the more you start thinking, wait, I'm a person too. My needs are a part of this equation. It's beautiful because there's this very natural shifting that starts to happen between you, your partner, your kids. There may be a little complaining when they start to sense that. Uh, how come I have more chores? Because eh, you live in the real world and that's okay. Or, you know, whatever it comes down to. But, you know, the third thing I wanted to say was, I want to encourage you that have time to brew on what this vision is and what your needs are, but then keep it close to your heart. You want to feed it. You want to pull that dream out and think about it. You want to think about How do I put it in motion? What could I start reading about or looking at or studying? And and for me, I pray about everything. You know, I just pray. I want God's blessing on it. And then, but you got to be careful not to share it with everybody. We've seen from social media that there's an entire world ready to pounce on anything And everything. But more importantly, it's just that when you come to that inner decision for yourself, nobody knows what process you went through. They don't know who you are in that process. So then they look at you and it's like, oh, you're doing that? Well, why? It's like they don't know your heart. They don't know what it took for you to come to whatever decision it is. So you have a trusted place, someone you can encourage you with that excellent, even an accountability partner that you're starting to do some things. But otherwise, just really hold it close. Let it be between you and, you know, whoever your spiritual source is. And, but it what's so cool is once you do do that, you'll start to notice things starting to shift and change. Because when you say, here's what I like, here's what I need, yeah, let's go with that. The universe goes, oh, okay, you're ready. Boom. And it starts to roll some things your direction and things just start to unfold. I I noticed that too. It was, it was actually amazing. It took me to not just dip my toe into a new endeavor. It made me, I had to sit in it. I had to sit in my decision, really own it Mm -hmm. and kind of dive in before yeah. the universe said, all right, I guess she's serious. Let's Isn't shift. It great? Up. And, um, but it doesn't, it, it's so much slower and it doesn't work quite as well. It feels like to me when you just dip your toe, if you just do it like half ass, <laughs> I hate to say that, but because you you're still, you're still radiating doubt. Mm-hmm. So when you come in at like, eh, I don't 
kind of thinking I want to work from, you know, the universe goes, okay, she hasn't made up her mind yet. But you're right. When you really are in it and you're completely committed, like even just even mentally, the universe says, yeah, okay, let's start giving her what she asked for. And I love the role modeling that really you're encouraging because all of this will in the end make you a better parent. Oh. You're role modeling, following your dreams, risk taking, doing something outside of your comfort zone and being okay with it. There's so many great role modeling things that you're doing as a parent for your children within this process that you may not even realize. And I know it really grew even my relationship with my own children and I, when I switched endeavors. And my kids always loved me being a teacher. I even taught in the same school as them. They loved it. They loved seeing me every day. But when I took the plunge and decided and made that shift, man, they were so proud of their mom. And to this day, they are my biggest fans. I mean, they don't care how, what anybody else thinks they are there. They're commenting on my post. They're liking it. They're sharing it. With <laughs> that's people. really fun. They're like, they're like mom, 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 that's a celebrity. <laughs> Um, but it's amazing. And, and I think it was the role modeling that I presented to them. Um, and, and really actually super impactful to my teenagers who, um, got to really see it for what it was and saw, saw the struggle. I didn't hide the struggle. I definitely was very open about it because otherwise I, I didn't want them to think that everything was just okay. Like it, it was hard, very, very difficult. And, and I them that. see again, excellent role modeling in that they see that you want to go after something it's going to take some muscle it's going to take some work yeah yeah it really does but it was in the end so much better relationship with my with my teenagers and i think respect just between us both we would sit down and do homework together on the table when i was back to school you know just very special very special times yeah and you know i think too you know for me there was i remember we franchised about the time my first, my oldest was in high school. She was going to graduate. So I think we sold our first franchise in 2001. She graduated in 2000. And it was kind of a, like that where I was like, what's life after mom going to look like? I didn't want to be sitting at home waiting, hoping my kids would come over. I thought, dang, I need to get a life. And so I think deep down, your kids kind of can appreciate that too. So it might be a little bit of like, wait a minute, I'm not the only thing in your life. But then at the same time, it's kind of cool that I'm not the only thing in your life. Well said, very well said. Mm -hmm. If people want to hear more from you and actually tell us a little bit about Young, young Rembrandt, how can they get a hold of you? Well, Young Rembrandt is an after-school um, program. We teach drawing classes to kids. So we teach preschoolers and we teach elementary age kids. And we do it after school at elementary school. So yeah, we haven't been around as much this past year. But then we also made digital online lessons. So we can be in the classroom. We can be online. We can do video lessons. So we have a lot of different ways. But you know, our idea is that when kids learn to draw, kids need the arts. There's not enough arts happening. Um, I, When I wrote my book, Being Visual, it was a lot about, um, it was about learning styles. Artistic kids are very right brain kids. These are kids that are often really challenged in the classroom because the classroom is not doing right by them. And so my blog is bettyfetter.com and I have a lot of resources, but more focused on how do we help these kids do better in the classroom or how do we get the classroom to respect who these kids are and what they need and just our overall need for creativity. So again, my book was being visual and it's really about how does your kid think? And if you've got a, ADD, really creative kid, and they struggle at school, it explains a lot. Or And we have a lot of resources on the blog, too. Well, thank you. And, you know, wait, wait, wait. i got to say, and we have franchises. So, 
you know, I love it. You can, uh, we have franchises. So people really loved working from home this past year from part-time business that needs really smart, savvy, experienced um, business people. Yeah. So if you're even thinking about making a shift, you know, you want to make a shift and you don't know what you want to do exactly, but you love kids and helping others and music, then Mm -hmm. this might be a great fit for you. There's a lot of wonderful franchises. So if you are looking to start a business and you don't want to start it from scratch, it is amazing what is off, what is possible in the franchise industry. So it's a good thing to check out. And can you just give us some links that the places where we can go to contact you again? One more time. Yeah. So Young Rembrandt is youngrembrandt.com and youngrembrandtsfranchise.com if you're considering anything like that. But otherwise, it will be the um, bettyfetter.com. Thank you so much for being on today, Betty. Your wisdom and your expertise Mm -hmm. is so valuable. But until next time, parents. You got this. We're just here to help.